Hello. 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 And we're, we're live on here. I got, I got this just going. But I'm fired up, guys. I'm with Mrs. Arenas and her daughter. Let's play Anaïs. Anaïs. Anaïsa. Anaïsa. Uh, and welcome, guys. So I want to introduce you guys to Mrs. Uh, Arenas. Um, this is, I call it the best of evergreen San Jose show because uh, it's my home. But who better than to have... Uh, Queen of Evergreen, the queen, oh my gosh. queen. No, don't call me the queen of Evergreen. Uh, one of our leaders. How about that? The title might have been taken already um, <laughs> by others. So I'm the council member for District Eight and uh, a 16-year-long resident. So and a super mom. And a mom of two see. with a child care issue this morning. So that's what we sometimes deal with. You're not. You're not the only one, right? That's yeah. a huge. Uh, Issue, but I think she's gonna win us a whole bunch of views just hanging out <laughs> right now. She keeps doing that, so she's, yeah, she's pretty popular on the 18th floor when she comes Hello. around. So, for people who just joined, Hello. we already told you good morning, Chandra. If I yell out and cut you off, Sylvia, it's the only time I do that is mm -hmm. to talk to people like Chandra Brooks who just uh, joined us. And oh, good hi, morning, Chandra. how are you? Um, but uh, for the, the two people in Evergreen who don't know. Uh, who you are? Sure. Uh, tell us a little uh, uh, about yourself. Um, maybe a little time. I hate that question. Uh -huh. People ask that about that. But maybe sure. just a little timeline. Let's go um, way back uh, before. So you went to uh, Evergreen Valley College at first before USF. Yes. So so yes. So I I grew up on the east side um, and uh, went to Independence High School. I uh, grad. Yeah, all you, you know what? We all have, you all you seventy sixers end up coming in office. We have like five five uh, council members who who graduated from Independence all at different times. Mag Magdalena, Magdalena, Sergio, uh -huh. Lon, uh, Diep, myself, and there's somebody else that I can't remember right now. Nice, we had a whole bunch of Hall of Famers that just got inducted at Eastside University. Yeah, I, yeah, here. including the vice mayor. So right, that was really right, right. cool. Yeah. So 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 tell me about it. So t just a quick timeline recap story. I don't want to go way back. Tell me you didn't go to Lindell, though. You didn't go to Lindell Elementary. I did. I did. I did no go to Lindell. Way. Yeah, I did. I went to Lindell you Elementary. Did you? My brother's oh. sister. Like sixth grade, I went to Pala. I've said it before. And then I went to Pala. That's crazy. That is crazy. I know it doesn't you, exist it's anymore. It's all the Ellen Rock products, right? Yeah. Who didn't have it the easiest that end up getting yeah. involved in we the... We work hard, Yeah, right? the community. Now they changed Pala's name, so James Dick's right there. And only after sixth grade at Pala did, did I go to, to Evergreen um, and that whole side. But uh, her daughter's whispering at her right now. But, she wants... We I have mean, a, a tea party happening behind camera, so... <laughs> I am my daughter is grabbing me a plate. Patrick, Patrick will get an Instagram uh, snapshot <laughs> at that later. Oh, can you see the uh, teacup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. It's exactly what I wanted. But <laughs> man, see, that blows me away. Um, you went to Pal and you're a Lindell Lion. Uh, my, yeah, my Lindell Lions. Yeah, oh, that's I, right. I remember Lindell that. Lindell Lions. <laughs> I'm lame like that. Uh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> but my son is a Laurel. He goes to Laurelwood okay, um, in the Evergreen School District, and they're Laurelwood Lions. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That is uh, awesome. So, nice connection. I just figured out this morning. That makes me happy. I, I immediately, <laughs> the vibes. The vibes. Yeah, you made me connect with, uh, <laughs> with my son. <laughs> so, so then, uh, so we we fast forward. Uh, go to Independence. Uh, oh, UC, yes. UC, uh, USF. Um, weird weirdest time in our lives. We don't. None of us know what the heck we want to do, right? No. What did, What did you decide to do? And right. Um, what did you start uh, decide to major in at first? Um, sure. So, so, you know, so I grew up um, in a family where, you, you know, we grew up really poor. Mm. So I have uh, five sisters, one brother, and, an, you know, in a house of three. And my parents were really lucky. They were able to, they worked in the canneries for a while. My mm -hmm. mom did, because she didn't, she was primarily a stay-at-home mom. But after she worked at the canneries, they were able to, to gather up money and then um, purchase a home. And so, of course, you know, n nothing, nothing um, uh, over the top. It was a really simple home, but it was over in the east side. Um, and funny, actually, funny story, we, we were originally supposed to be living over off of Doburn Avenue. And if anybody's familiar with Doburn Avenue, it's not the nicest uh, cul-de-sac that to live in is right. one of the a, a really difficult place to live in um, uh, uh, by off of Jackson Avenue mm, okay and so uh, that house got broken into my oldest sister 
So my oldest sister is so much older than I am. I was her flower mm -hmm, girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so she was in the house. They broke in. They took everything. We didn't have much, but they took whatever we had. Yeah. And uh, and we and we had a dog, and they took the dog. Oh my <laughs> They God. took the dog. But my sister was in a room sleeping, and so my dad got really, you know, that really uh, put him on Shouldn't pins have. and needles because yeah, yeah. they didn't do anything. My sister, my sister didn't even wake up because she was working nights saving up for her wedding. But the thought that they could. But the thought that yeah. So then you know somehow my dad finagled his way to 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 you know he said he, over the years he would tell the story. My my parents had passed away already. Yeah. But he would tell the story about how he just threw the keys at the realtor and said, "Take your house back. I want, I, I take want care something. Of this. Yeah, take care of it. I want something else." And so, so he he managed. I don't know how he did it, but he managed, and we uh, ended up living on Lombard Avenue, which is okay. off of Capitol Expressway and Capitol Avenue. Okay. And so uh, from there, I went to Lindale. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. I went to Lindale, and then I went to Pella, and then I went to Independence. Um, then after that, of course, Capital and Capital. Capital and Capital. <laughs> right, right before that. So mine was right after that. It was Sierra Vista Court, which is you know the, the commercial yeah. complex there, right before yeah. Lombard and Lombard. Uh -huh. um, and then the, the, where the okay, serve me some carrots, please. <laughs> I want to serve you. Uh -huh. uh, so, and right where you pass through Jack in the Box and so forth. Yeah. So that was my walk yeah. from Pella oh, back. Oh, of course. And I, I would turn through Lombard, but uh, but anyway, that, that's a, that's amazing. I mean. Similar, similar story. Um, we would have like birthday parties, and all of a sudden, I think my aunt's car got broken into in the driveway during our birthday party. We no. walk, we walk outside, and there's hundreds of people playing football, playing catch. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we ask everybody, "Hey, did anybody see anything?" And everybody's like, "No, what? we didn't. See, no, we didn't see they anything." Just blended right? in. So at, at that point, we had enough gates around that you know things slowly got better with us. Those who know me, I mean, we we had. One of the first uh, subways there in San Jose, but that, I mean that was a long time that yeah. we had just that one yeah. struggling. Nobody yeah. wanted, to, nobody, hard nobody knew it. what yeah. that was at that like, time, yeah. and that's what made us finally move over to the other side. And what a, and it's good to talk about those things. What a what yeah. a culture shock for me, Paolo. We had uniforms, right? Where I I, I didn't I mean, when you're at that age. I mean, yeah, there were no uniforms when okay, I went. Okay, yeah, Every, everything is normal. You feel that you have everything, and then when we go over to Quimby, it was like culture shock. Oh, so you moved when you yeah, were in uh, middle school. Yeah, oh, okay. so zero to thirteen, yeah. and then that is so and, cool. and then it was yeah. But anyways, um, that's see we're we're just vibing through no, this like it's that. different elements that you that you uh, have to deal with when you're a different side of town. Right, right, right. and it makes and, you who you are. You never forget where you came. Oh, absolutely, right. and I never thought. Hi, Mama. I never thought like the the um, the friends I had in 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 elementary that went with me to Palo Middle School. You know, some of them took different roads, and some of them end up pregnant. Some of them in gangs. Some mm -hmm. of them just dropped out. Right. And um, but okay. I never thought like I lived in a really difficult place because mm -hmm. um, that's what I just knew. I just thought that that's everybody kind of grows up the same. I mean, I, nobody, I realize there's some. Nobody believed me. We had that in seventh grade. What? Girls getting pregnant yeah. and those type of things. Like, yeah. No, I um, had somebody, so somebody Mommy. in Glendale. Right. Her, her name was Victoria. That's all I remember. I won't say her last name, but. Right, right. She had a baby. Right. And we were like, everybody was like, what? Yep, what do yep. you mean you have? And nobody understood the concept. It was, she would bring pictures of this baby. Right. And we thought, oh, maybe it's her younger brother or sister. And we were, somehow, we some, somehow, I think she must have told somebody. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that, but, but what it does is it just tells us a reflection as far as, um, you know, your most uh, sexual education, those type of very important things, contraceptives, that, that lack of education, which we yeah. all need in our youth, can avoid those type of things. Hey, Gabby, sorry, I've been keeping up on who's jumping in because we're vibing uh, too much here. Yeah. So the, the, ma the major, before we get into value for you guys, the major that we... Um, Chose was it? I'm guessing. I, I, didn't, I didn't do my homework. Mine was human development. Okay. So, so it's human development in early childhood. So I'll tell you the reason why I did that. Sure. Um, because I I uh, I realized in my Mommy, family there wasn't one. any one person more important than the other. Mm. Well, except for my brother, because you know men in, in Latino families mm -hmm. are like gods, right? Right. And so. Mommy. So, so we were we were meant to be a unit. And this one. Okay, can you bring me the bring me the little teapot and then we'll pour it. And so, so um, I learned that. Yeah, I, I learned that that um, 
No, it's right there, the pink one, the pink one. So I learned that, that um, the, the value of a team, right? right? And I learned the value of, of, of sometimes one person sacrifices for the other. Right. And, and, and he's just bagging, she's looking for the other yellow one. She's looking for the other yellow one that she never that brought. Me? I don't think she brought the other yellow oh, cup. I don't think you brought any, yeah. Mommy, is the, there wasn't any other yellow cup. That's the only one that you had. So I love this, his mom yeah. love this because they know what this is like. This is going through, this can pull up. Oscar went to Silver Creek many years ago. Awesome, Oscar. Awesome. Hey, Pernit, thank you for joining us. Uh, I cannot read that. That's pretty good. I know, I have, I have, I have insane. Yeah, like really good vision. I should have become a pilot or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, you missed um, your opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Oh, we got friends. Colton, uh, Colton tells me I think it's 33 or something. Uh, but, can you bring that pink one over there, please, no, Mama? The can you ask Alicia? Oh, this pink one. Yeah, I found oh, there, there you go. go. We found we found the right teapot. <laughs> we found the right cup. Uh, but uh, did you end up getting your master's at QSF oh, in public? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, sorry. Um, no and then uh, so then I went to so I went to Cal State East Bay, and then I get my um, so I was working for uh, the city of San Jose actually twenty. Twenty odd something years ago. Right, the full circle. And, so what, yeah, full what was circle. that? Were you uh, you uh, interned or something? Why no, no, no. I worked uh, for the for youth intervention services, and I worked for um, neighborhood services. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, there was a program called Project Crackdown and Project okay. Blossom, and so they would target like the neighborhoods we probably lived in, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the neighborhoods that had a lot of gangs, neighborhoods that had a lot of like. Um, uh, garbage mm -hmm. and, and you know uh, just things happening a lot of crime and so what we would go in there and do is like in a concerted effort everybody from like code enforcement police department mm -hmm. crime prevention mm -hmm. and neighborhood leaders that would go we, it would be kind of a attack attacking mm -hmm. all of those issues at the same time so that way Mommy, so that way people me. really can tell the difference Mommy. in their neighborhood yeah. and, and that yeah. increase in neighborhood Mommy. oh we did it Yay! The daughter wanted to serve her. She's like, Mom, I want to serve you some, time, yum, some tea. Yum, yum. Uh, you know, while we're on that, one thing that impressed yum, me that, that I liked the was, so one. Quimby and White, we have a, a shopping center there, li liquor store. <laughs> you know what's funny? She was so shy, she didn't say a word. I knew that she was going to open up. Like, uh, like, like crazy. Who you got there? Diana. Uh, oh, is that Diana Cromedy? She said, I love how you normalize having a family and being a mother. <laughs> You're shedding light. No, it's so important. It's so important because, Thank you, Diana. I, I mean, other mothers would think, okay, well, she doesn't know what it's like. She knows what it's like. <laughs> you know, and I, uh, I gotta tell you, Diana knows what it's like. Right. She's a single mom and she's done a really awesome job in raising her, um, her kiddo who's now, I think in high school, right, Diana? And, um, and and she's getting her master's too in urban planning. I'm really proud of that. And she's one of our neighborhood leaders. So Kudos I mean, that. women, we can we can do it all. We yep. can we can have it all. No I doubt. think it's just a matter of balance and a lot of help from your partner or your support network. And, well um, yeah. No, I'm so I, I'm so glad you brought her. One thing when you're talking about the neighborhood enforcement, you did something that I know I like personally. It was a, a shopping center, so we're thinking Quimby and White, but you had, oh, yeah, you had a meeting, you had a whole bunch yeah. of people surrounded, and I remember... But no, we didn't surround anybody. No, I mean, so people were standing in a circle. All right, volunteers, <laughs> yeah, volunteers. And uh, Car uh, that Carl's Jr., uh, you know, I spent a lot of time there too. I remember... Uh, I would be that guy that would call 411 when I just, because it would just kill me the whole day when I saw a guy in an apron chasing another guy who looked like he stole something across oh. Carl's Jr. Really, rarely would happen, uh. but, but I called in right away, but then what's going to change that? And the only thing that's going to change those type of things is, well, what, what, what did you do there? And check out her Instagram, you'll, you'll see the picture. Um, it was just volunteers and talk, and it was a police officer there, yeah. and I, what was the goal of that? Yeah, was, actually our... our um our captain is really, really awesome, Captain Trooper. Um, giving a shout out to him. So he and Crime Prevention, the both of the Sandras out there, they did a really awesome job in bringing everybody together so that <clears throat> just educate them what to look well, out for. No, well, it's it's like a neighborhood watch, right? But mm -hmm. it, except for its its businesses. Uh huh. Can you serve this to Patrick? He doesn't have one. Can, Can I, I have some later? I'll try some. I'll try some. Give it to Patrick. Give it to Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> and um, hey, maybe maybe Alicia can come in here so that oh. she can also serve this. Oh. 
Okay, I'll work can on you that. text her? And um, so, so anyways, we had heard from from the neighborhood that there was a lot of issues happening there, and um, and uh, I think the, the the owner the owners of the businesses are doing a really great job in terms of trying to manage what's mm -hmm. what's there. Um, they, I think we all need a little bit of support, and so mm -hmm. I was really happy that all of those business owners came out and actually had a really nice conversation with us about their concerns, because we might have some concerns that we think are emanating from them, and they might, right. uh, and they were able to clarify some of that, right? And so right. I think it's it's really looking out for one another, and you know that there was that um, unfortunate uh, robbery that had a fatality for for the business owner over in the liquor yes. store. Yes, 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 yes. And so, you know, that can happen to anybody. Right. And, um, and you know, you're just trying to um, run your business, and like your parents, right? Right. They started from scratch and did a, a subway, and, and uh, you know, and working really hard to make things better for their family, so. Right. All of those businesses. And you saw the outpour of how many people equally loved him so much, right? Yes, and, uh, yes. And, and right, right behind Valero, San Felipe, uh, in, in Aborn. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's so important, those are the type of things, so, and thank you for, for doing that. I feel that's uh, very important to educate. One thing, and this is not your fault, but uh, for any business owners out there, is lighting. Just from my experience, is at nighttime, when those lights are out, read that poll, call the county, I think it's the airport's department or something like that, have them replace it, or get on your landlord about it. Everyone's afraid to call their landlord, but I know for a fact, right around Carl's Jr. that we guys are having that meeting, it is pitch black at dark because all those are out. Mm -hmm. But sometimes and there's a lot it, it of takes trees. A there's yes, a, there's yes, like yes, a yes. tree line right on. Uh, we um, see it all the time. Yeah, and, and so and that creates a little bit more dark. And it's where like, it's dark, more people want to hang out because nobody can see them when they're driving by. Absolutely. And I, I've talked to in other cities in Gilroy and so forth. I've talked to, to city council about this, and I'm the one guy who's not afraid to get on his landlord about it, right? It doesn't. Yeah, and then later, yeah. all the other tenants thank me. Yeah, right? well, because you know, they're the, equally the, as, these as tenants well. at, the, at, at, at both of these plazas. They, uh, they're responsible, they want to do their part, and sometimes some of these landlords, and I'm not putting the fault just on them, but uh, they're not as easily accessible as, as maybe True. others. Out and so, yeah, out of state or out of the country. Um, but, you know, street lights that are on city property, you can always um, call us, call our office, or you can um, get on my app, my San Jose app, okay. and then report it that way. Um, but we're always happy to facilitate any of those um, lights that you have a concern about. Right. Um, but the, the the really important thing that that came out of that meeting, and thanks for bringing that up, right. is that we all organize around a common cause, and that's really safety. Safety for right. your safety for uh, the residents, safety for their customers, and um, and I think. Because that that's something that unifies everybody, it wasn't a difficult conversation to have. De Debbie just joined us. Hey, Debbie. Debbie's owner of Smash Gyms. They have a whole bunch of locations. And then again, uh, right at Eastridge's entrance, where um, uh, Musicians Warehouse used to be, which oh, is closed yeah, yeah. now. Oh. Um, I've been and De Debbie's a great gym, very safe. A lot of martial artists, don't worry, around there. Um, same thing, it's just not being able to be seen. I think it was one out of the million times I've gone there. I literally saw broad daylight, some kids tried to bash a lady's window. Um, we'll, we'll keep it po positive here, but I scared them away before like a noon practice or something da, like da, da, that. Da, da, da. I'm, just, I'm not trying to get it myself. And again, I'm not trying to knock them because her and Rudy have done a great job of cleaning the area no, up. No, it's, it's uh, and the just, landlord's it, improved it a lot. Yeah. But, you, but you gotta talk, and let's be honest, sometimes yeah. the reason I say this, Ms. Arenas, is people um, are afraid to just ask their landlord of things because they're afraid they might get angry or they might kick up. Let's not do that. But it's <laughs> but, polite but firm. Just, yeah. just you know. Yeah. Just well, well, Roman, I think it's always a really good idea to have a business watch and then eventually this will lead to a business um, uh, neighborhood group, right? right. It, it, in, a real, in really in the same way that a neighborhood uh, watch right. can turn into a neighborhood association, right? right so right. a business association can then develop and people are looking out for one another. And if Roman happens not to be around that kickbox or, or gym, then somebody, you know, the neighbor, uh, the uh, next door business tenant, you can, see something, can actually, say something, right? Yeah, can yeah. actually make that call and, and maybe save somebody's window from getting broken. Right, right, and who knows so, what's going on. So remember, how, remember how I said that uh, we won't get through one question in like 30 minutes will go no, by? No, I know. <laughs> I yeah. like that. This one, <laughs> have you, um, 
on again. So, so uh, you, you we were talking about you came full circle and then you got involved and you re, you ran. Well, how many years ago? It's two years ago now. Uh, uh, was that your first time running for city council? Yeah. So so I'll tell you the the reason I I um, come here, Mama. Look. Here you are. You're on right there. See. <laughs> And everybody's seeing you over here. So they see if, you, if you're saying something, they, they're going to see you over there. Okay. <laughs> so, so my son was born really premature okay. and just needed a little bit more uh, support in school. And so when he wasn't getting it and I was working at First Five, I worked at First Five for 10 years after uh, working for the city of San Jose for about seven right. between um, neighborhood services and then uh, youth intervention. Um, when I worked for Youth Intervention, there were um, those services were catered for children who are kids who who are either violent or who are gang involved or gang affiliated. Okay. And I soon realized that you know what we needed to do is is um, really intervene a lot younger. Mm. Yeah. And so first five, of course, its focus is for children uh, zero through five. Right. And so that's when you know that's before a child turns six. 80% of, uh, of a of brain develops by the age of mm -hmm. six, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's when a lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for growth. Right. And to really give uh, children a chance to to fulfill whatever, you know, career choice they have. Right. It's not to say that it's all lost if it's not done by six, but you, you give children a better chance, sure. right? Sure. So, so I worked for First Five for 10 years, and, and I thought I was a really great advocate. You know, I'm saying all the right things. Mm -hmm. I know how to get, um, so I thought I knew how to get services for my, for my kiddo, and when he wasn't getting them, yeah. um, then it, it made me really angry. Right, and what do you do, right? And so Help then you, you try to figure something out, and so. Take the next this, step? Yeah, take the next step, and I said, okay, well, you know, I don't want this, this to happen to other children. And I saw this happening to, to a lot of our children in, um, in the clinics. Vice Mayor and I both worked at uh, Gardner after we worked at uh, First Five. Okay. And um, and we realized and Gar there's a peanut butter jelly sandwich right there, Mama. Uh, Gar Gardner was a, was it for, for foster kids? No, uh, Gardner is a, is a community clini uh, clinic. And, um, hold on yeah. a second. It's a community <laughs> clean, uh, clinic, and then there's assessments that happen when uh, children. Can you please do that one, Anna? Yes. Please eat it's that like, one, okay? Feed me, Ma. <laughs> feed me, feed me. Can and I feed you? I promise that she's got milk, and she's got a peanut butter <laughs> jelly sandwich, and she's got a banana. Um, and she had a yogurt, so she's being fed. She I don't want people to no, take no, no. that. No, that she I'm wants just, to oh. physically <laughs> feed you. Okay. okay, bring me the, the sandwich and then I'll feed you over here. Yep, and then you can come sit over here. I don't want to say your name, name right. And Anna? Anna, Anna, okay. Anna, Anna. Yeah, her name's Anais. 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 There we go. There we go. Uh, See, jelly no. sandwich. <laughs> no, totally, uh, totally yeah. understand. So that that's what kind of sparked, you know. What was, my yeah. question was, what, yeah. ma what makes you want to so get I went involved? To, yeah. So I went into the school board, and um, and my my son just needs a little little extra support, right? Right. Um, but when when kids don't get that, even if it's a small tiny support, it's a snowball effect, right? Yeah. And yeah. especially for boys mm -hmm. who develop a little bit later than than ch uh, than women or uh, girls do. Right. And so it, it means a lot for kids who who are growing so and, and building see. you know yeah. their self esteem and building their fundamentals for learning. Right. So he's in third grade now. He's doing he's doing absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was really looking at those third grade cutoff. You know, you have to have third grade reading proficiency, and studies show that if you don't meet that mm -hmm. third grade re reading proficiency, right. the likelihood is that you know you you may not make it. Right. right? Um, this is so great. How many people do you come across, Mr. Arenas? None of them know your story. I mean, you have a little bio, uh, bio and this and that, but uh -huh. there's just hundreds of moms out there who's like, wow, she is no different than me. And this, that's why yeah. I feel things like this are so uh -huh. important um, because uh, I, think, I think it's great for people to know those little things. In there. Yeah. And you can have a, a million seminars, you can knock it out once. Look at where we're at in 2017 <laughs> with Facebook uh, right. Live and so forth. So before... Uh, 
if we get into another topic, uh, you're also not any longer, you're on the Evergreen um, Elementary School District. I had Charles Crosby on oh, uh, yeah. as well. Uh -huh. And yeah. um, you gotta check out my stuff. But, uh, <laughs> I, I did, I did okay. check out that, that interview with Charles uh, Crosby. So he, right. yeah. so we, so I were, so I have served uh, a couple of years for the Evergreen Mommy School Board. Me. Right. Uh, and trustees. then um, as a trustee, and because I really wanted to change the rules for kids. So serving kids, and families, I think, is, is great one by one. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes a huge difference when you change the rules, right? right so when you right, change right. the rules and you change uh, when you know um, what it is that you want to change. And I'm not saying that we changed, uh, you, you know, because the school system is in and of itself. Well, change the law of whole, life. There's always going right. to be improvements. There's always things that need to be but done. But I think I, 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 at, the very, at the very minimum, I think I brought some awareness about social emotional health for mm -hmm. our children because that's just as important as as scholastic um, or um, or stem because you know stem is kind of the the focus nowadays but if, if children can't read or if yeah. children don't feel good about themselves or can't read right. um, the cues that you and I can read you know yep. like you, you make a face you a social cue and you and I respond right, right. And nowadays right. kids don't pick up on those as as well as as in the past because we have things like technology 93 that percent of communication take, is body yeah, language right yeah like that take the place of, yeah. of of human interaction right, or right. direct human interaction so right. so i think um then you got this job and you can't handle that anymore <laughs> which is you have to but one day right yeah. but for a mom out there um uh, you have to get voted on or anybody can so, really join and run to sure. be board so for you? for the school board uh you do have to run and um i had the support of the evergreen teachers association and so that really helped and of course, you know, I had my own network of, of folks who would go out there and, and speak on my behalf and knock on Morning. doors. And so the same thing happened with with uh, with uh, this this job, with sure. uh, serving as a council member. And I really owe it to the vice mayor because I think as a woman, you re you think mm, that's it. not something that that I can do. I ne was never meant to to be a a, a public servant mm. elected public right, servant right, right because right. I was in public service for 20 years prior to, to applying um, as a council member it should motivate you to run you're a sixer baby you gotta <laughs> run <laughs> Right. You're, I'm a Lindell you're from the east. I'm a you're a Linda Lyon. I wonder if she's a Linda Lyon. She might be Goss. She might be a Goss Gator. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and and so 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 you know I I, I really have to thank her because I know she sacrificed a lot um, mm. on her part mm. to make sure that I um, I was successful. Yeah. And you know I, I just I have the mentor work. to ask yeah. to call. Like, Am I doing it right? What should I expect? Yeah. Lots That's of invaluable. And in whatever you guys do. Don't know. And I think sometimes when I leave cards with, you know, if I go to a workshop or a conference or something and I see somebody who's younger than me or somebody who, who, who wants, who's interested or shows signs of interest mm -hmm. and I give them a card, I really hope that they call me. And, right. you know, lots right. of times, especially, especially it's women amazing, right? it's don't, but, um, but people have the fear of, I don't want to look stupid, like I don't know, like drop that. There's, you can always learn, knowledge is infinite, right? There's no, everyone you'll meet knows something you don't, so oh. be humble enough to oh. ask. I know right? I made a, all kinds of mistakes. Patrick yeah. can attest to it because Patrick was with me during the campaign. Who I doesn't? know we, you know, we had our office out of the garage. We mm -hmm. had no money. We didn't, we didn't have campaign signs. And some people like looked down on me because we didn't have campaign signs <laughs> and thought that maybe there was something awry. That, yeah. that maybe there was, people. you know, like some yeah. underhanding stuff. But it was just really hard. It was hard work. It's what you said in the in the beginning. Like right. when when you know. You have to work extra hard than everybody else because you come from a different mm -hmm. um, family who doesn't have the same opportunities as you. You just get used to that, right? right? So then you just work hard, and we we outworked or outvoted or out whatever it was, but sure. we work really hard to get where we are. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So. Um, I'm, I'm over this question, but just for people who, who don't know, um, can, you, can you give us the Reader's Digest version of what's going on with this uh, evergreen uh, housing uh, type sure. con controversy? Sure. I know, I know you, um, I'm not sure if, if you can't remember if you wrote a piece on it or not, but um, I mean, I don't... I, I did write an op-ed, okay. and, and there is some, some question about, I'll tell you what, uh, so... Uh, there's signatures that have been submitted. There's only 22,700 that are needed to qualify this um, petition for as an initiative, right? Okay, and for Joe Schmo, who hasn't even heard about it yet, 
Um, it's basically about the fact of a, a development behind, and I, I'm not even fully right. up to, it's behind a, Evergreen College. So it's a senior it's a, housing, yeah, it's a, okay. behind the college, so yeah. it's in between um, Aborn and, um, and uh, Yerba Buena. Mm -hmm. So that really nice open space in the back of the college. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so there's an initiative on the ballot that is asking voters to, um, to approve or to consider this initiative. Um, and this initiative has um, a 910 senior homes and um, of those 20% of them are affordable housing. Um, but I'll tell you what we found. <laughs> this is what we so found good. is that that out of those 910, the ones that are affordable housing, this is a gated community. Mm -hmm. And so for most of the seniors, I don't know about if your grandparents are still alive, but if, if they are, mm -hmm. when and if they're, our culture might live together anyway, so right, they might not right, be right. facing this, but not right. every culture or not every family has that opportunity, right? And so if, if uh, you're a senior and you want to... Um, downsize maybe because you have an empty Don't nest now at the house. Mm -hmm. um, you Don't usually downsize, me. right? You get a smaller cold. place. Yeah. Uh, maybe a I'm condo, cold. maybe a town home because you wanna you don't I'm wanna clean cold. that much. You don't wanna clean you don't wanna, you know, Mommy. cut sure. the grass, you don't wanna do all those things. Right. And so but these I'm are mansions cold. for mm. seniors. Mommy. And and Mommy. you know usually cold. it's essentially cold? being okay. a so so hey would you like and, to yeah, sure. Okay. So so this sweet leather Baby it's, jacket. It's leather. It's leather, you guys. It's leather. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't afford. I can't so, afford leather. So, at the end of the day, why should people care or um, so, or uh, uh, not care? Is, is this the type? I mean, to talk from a real estate uh, point of view, um, some people should have that opted because I think some of the hardest uh, homes, even for people who get stuck in the fact to sell and get rid of, rid of even seniors, are places like the villages where you visited, but it's 55 and over, and it can sometimes. Take a um, long time. Yeah, you know, you'll see their values are in the six hundred thousands or lower because um, it only appeals to that mommy. certain sector, Get right? And off. and we're not saying this to be for or against it, but to be neutral that the people around them, I know for a fact it will it may, it may devalue their home. So mm -hmm. to give, I'm not saying that that's not, they shouldn't do it, but they should. Everyone should have a say, right? Well, I, I, well yes, I, I'm not saying people okay. should or should not yeah. support it. I mean, obviously, I have my own um, position. Right. I'm just saying that what. The what community they, should be aware. The, the community should should they should be honest with what this is, and this is not senior housing. The, these are luxury homes for 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 community. Disguised as disguised as as senior housing and veteran housing, and so you know, I mean, Patrick. Through the veteran housing. So well, they say that they may. Right, uh, right, 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 right. Uh, it says in the, in the glossy nice pamphlet that it's, it's senior and veteran housing. That these lawyers presented, right? But uh, there's nothing in the initiative that we saw and that um, city staff saw that holds them uh, no, legally um, bound to serve or to have some of these housing units to veterans. So that's the problem for me. It's it's contradicts not. itself. In it contradicts way. itself. Yeah, I, saw, it's I saw Sam go on too, and Sam wasn't happy about it. Yeah. And he straight up, he doesn't talk about videos about everything. That's when I thought, okay, there, there's obviously a, you know, a mess of this madness uh, here that, that wasn't, wasn't satisfying. Yeah, okay, so I'll tell you some, what we have is uh, Envision uh, general plan. And so the growth for San Jose is mm -hmm. meant to be condensed housing, more dense housing. So you see a lot of the building and a lot of development happening here downtown. Um, and you see them in forms of high rises, mm -hmm. right? And smaller homes. Um, because for us, we don't have a lot of ways to mitigate traffic, right? right. Um, so that allows people to, to live and work nearby, mm -hmm. to bring jobs back home, because uh, right now, we don't have a good ratio between jobs and employed residents. So that means a lot of our mm -hmm. residents here are leaving, going somewhere else for a job. Right. So say like Palo Alto has three jobs per one resident, which is a the good middle class ratio. Is shrinking in that way, right? right? And so we want to make sure that we are able to give quality city services to residents. And having a a, um, a development out in the outskirts that way, um, instead of Instead of bringing something to the uh, to the city, it takes away. Right. So it um, can you go get it again, right. Mama? As so, opposed to just general housing, well, right? because, uh, so or affordable here, housing. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing with this one. So 
they're not going to mitigate any traffic. It mm -hmm. said so in their initiative. So if you read the initiative, mm -hmm. they're not going to. They're not liable for mitigating any traffic. Mm -hmm. They're not liable for mitigating any like environmental impacts. Which means, well, who's going to mitigate that, right? Mm -hmm. Either the the community is going to have to just deal with it and have more traffic, or the city of San Jose and the taxpayers will be. Are going to pay um, for roads, uh, right? right? Paving right. all that grading, I mean, all that stuff. That, that's so they're, saying, they're essentially saying we want this. We want it all, and we also don't want it to give an environmental report, which for developers is a, uh, a very uh, important report, right? Mm -hmm. Testing soil, doing all those type of things. Mm -hmm. It's um, expensive, but it's needed, and, and it, it keeps our community safe and, right. and, um, and the environment um, less impacted, right? right. And, then, and then the biggest thing that's tough for you guys is everybody should be treated the same. You know, you shouldn't have, um, <laughs> because you're this or you're that or you're... Uh, so you should have to go through the same process, the same ways, Absolutely. and that, that, that is where I can see that it's almost insulting to uh, the, the council <laughs> and mayor that, hey, you're going to come here and not even right. say you're, you're, you know, you're, you're going to, uh, based on the word, but compromise or tell us well, if, what, what things right. are, right? When you're, there's not, a you're not fooling us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not fooling us, and when the development happens, usually there's some level of community benefit, like, okay, so we're going to come into your, your community. Uh, we're going to create some impact on the roads. Um, so, so some development build. They build a school. They'll build a park, or they'll contribute to some traffic improvements. Mm -hmm. um, this project right. has none of those things. Right. So, in the end, if this, if, uh, when if this happens, um, when it goes on the ballot, um, the city is always liable for uh, making sure that. That there, the streets are are paved and nicely mm -hmm. uh, looking. That we and have good lighting beautiful. to avoid crimes and that, things yeah, like that. Yeah, so we so about. we're not going to not provide those services just because. That and what you guys are saying is no, we're not going to take out taxpayers' pocket to pay for this at the right. least. Um, if this passes, you guys should be. If this be, passes, uh, so but, but it's on you guys. They're only yeah, ones on, who it, don't want this to happen. You got to say something. And you know what the 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 clinger here is that it's not just District Eight. Mm. people who need to vote it's everybody. the whole city right right and so everybody thinks well we are in a housing crisis and so everybody's going to see this and say well you know it's a housing crisis right. so why wouldn't we want to have this housing yeah. and some people don't want it in their backyard so yep. they'll say yep. evergreen has a lot of space right. yes let's do this but we want to make sure that we continue to honor our our general plan and that uh, site is and for, for everyone who trolls that say, "Oh, San Jose's mm -hmm. not the same anymore. It's so expensive. That too bad I can't live here and I got to get out." These are the type of things where you should, uh, you know, get involved and, and, and say those. It's much more powerful. Come down at a city hall meeting. Tell them your story. Tell them how you feel. Versus, you know, sometimes just writing on social media is not enough. That's yeah. real impact. That's real change. And trust me, the last thing I'd ever thought I'd be doing is talking to politicians or even be involved in. I used to fall asleep when C-SPAN came on, <laughs> and now I love watching C-SPAN because when I realized, and you have to fall, fall asleep once. <laughs> yes, because the fact that I realized that okay. The, there's significant change for the good you can make here, not just the stigma of politicians that they're corrupt and the bad here, right? But anyway, let's keep, let's keep it positive. I like to keep, keep it. Keep positive. Let's, let's keep it. A, a, a I think there's a, a lot of great work that that uh, all of the council members are are doing, and the mayor is leading a great plan, uh, a 15 point plan to increase the housing stock. And so mm -hmm. there's you answers. It's, it's a slow process, but we are working towards it. Right. We want to make sure that we increase housing stock. We, you know, we just passed the apartment rent ordinance and um, I was behind having it, uh, having rents um, connect to the CPI, which is a consumer price index, um, have a two to five, but we didn't win. You know, it's a 5% right. flat. Um, so uh, landlords uh, that have uh, apartments that are uh, rent controlled, which are mm -hmm. any apartment that has been built before 1979. What up, Frankie? What up, Maddie? Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, I'm gonna no, that's okay. That, that are built before 1979. Those are rent controlled. We have very, you know, we have a limited amount, and so we try to protect those tenants and make sure that they can stay in San Jose. And so we just had that. We had a tenant protection ordinance to make sure that if uh, if the landlord decide, decides to sell or improve. Their, their property that, that people um, have uh, are compensated um, mm. when they're relocated. So there's a lot of great things that the city is doing to make sure that, that the folks
folks who make San Jose great stay here, that they can work here, that they can right. play and live here. At the same token, Roman, you try to be too Mr. Positive, people, there's going to be some people out there in the world that are going to walk all over you, right? In yeah. situations like the one we described. So we need people to defend those who can't defend themselves. So I, I was going to go into Finland and you guys watch Charles Crosby talk and talk about your thoughts on the education, but we're already flying by on time. So I'm, I'm going to do something that, that uh, you know, I will do from now. It'll be... Uh, It'll be in the culture before, but I call it rapid fire. Oh. She's not prepared for this. I'm only gonna pick. Roman, you said uh, we were gonna few. do this. <laughs> I'm only gonna pick a few, but um, they're they're only questions that I know that she can answer. I asked one of them before <laughs> to Evergreen's principal recently. Okay. Um, so tell me about a, a failure or what you thought at the time was uh, a failure, and we all have these that ended up being one of the most beneficial. You think positive things, um, you know in your life that, like they say, was meant yeah. to, to happen. Um, uh, what would you think of, for example, I told the principal this, she said, well, if I wouldn't have failed this exam, I would have never known that I was actually meant for this. Yeah. Is there anything you can think of in your life like that? Yeah, I, you know, I think when uh, I got pregnant with Anais and, um, and uh, I, I um, was working through my master's and I was working full time, I didn't return to work and I found that as a failure. Like, mm. yeah, but I just couldn't handle all of those things all at once. Mm. Um, and, and it did feel like a failure because I didn't go back to, uh, to work, to work with these families and community. I'd love to do that. I, mm. I love doing it. Um, but if I, if I had gone back, I would never consider this opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that was meant to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah, your failures do lead you in a, in a, or in a different direction. Right, yeah. right, and you have to get those mistakes. Um, okay, what, what is a, a book that you're given the most as a gift? That we all feel that, we're like, man, no, 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 you gotta have this, you gotta read this. Is there any? Uh, yes, there is one, it's called Original Sin. Okay. And, um, and uh, look it up, take it when you're Love camping it. and uh, read it. Yep, yep. I love that you didn't give us my detail on it because it's one of those things that obviously you can explain for days, but you're like, no, yeah, no, 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 no. We, you got to read it. Time, time yes, time. yes. Read it, yeah. uh, uh, let's see. I was say, what obsession do you love exploring on the weekends or evenings? But you answered yeah. that. You love going and checking out the, the parks. Uh, yes. And people can check out uh, Sylvia Arenas. Is it.com? Uh, what is it, um, Patrick? It's district8.com. Uh, district San Jose, CA.gov slash district8. Mm. Perfect, perfect. Okay, we'll keep this at the. Uh, at the last uh, one, um, let's see, out of these two, I'm torn on which one uh, I want to pick. Okay, let's see, the advice you would give, you're in time machine, you get to go back, we're not going back to Lindell, but we're going back to the 25-year-old uh, Sylvia, you get to go back in time, you can tell her anything. Well, that was just five years ago, so. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'm kidding, I'm okay, kidding. Okay. No, I'm 30, so hey, I'm getting old too. That was perfect time at 20%. Uh, so if you, you, go, know, you can go back in the time machine. You said two, it's okay, but, it's uh, Ash's 21st birthday next year. So. Um, <laughs> okay, so if I, if I was to go back and. Hey, we're almost done, okay? We're almost great. done. You're you going really to say good, goodbye Anna. right now, okay? I'm proud of you. Uh, so that's some advice that I would give uh, my 25 year old self, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be. Um, <sighs> To, to, to look at uh, the opportunities that come to you sometimes are there and you just don't see them or you're too afraid to take them. Right. And so I think I would have said to myself, uh, don't be afraid to take those opportunities. Don't be afraid to fail. Right. Yeah. I heard something interesting uh, speech as well that don't get too locked into your goals because we goal set and that's so positive and so good. But sometimes in your peripheral yeah, view, yeah. there's a little shiny object, but because you're so locked in yeah. that you might pass yeah. that up. So to also be aware of that. Uh, somebody share, uh, shared it on, on Goldcast as a, a speech recently that I'll have to share. Rachel Perkins, she probably jumped in uh, this time. I'll share for you. I thought it was great. Um, I think it was in Australia, it was like a high school graduation or something, but I think, uh, I think we're good there. I want to say thank you so much to Anna.
for Say being bye, so Anna. cool. Say bye, uh, Anna. Thank you to Miss Arenas. Oh, that's the last thing we're going to do. Real quick, uh, Patrick, you could jump in here too. So a few things for the mom's events coming up in Evergreen, Evergreen Village Square. So this Saturday, we got the Evergreen Library. He hates being in the limelight. I'm going to turn the camera towards you. I'm going to turn the camera. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. You're in a world of social media. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Um, so no, I want to give a shout out to, to the, the mosque. Um, everyone is our neighbor. We love all. We mm -hmm. feed all. They've been working hard on building it. They're having a little fundraising thing, if you are interested, at Chandani Restaurant, which is in Fremont. Um, if we screw up any of the dates or times, just look into these as we mention them. Go ahead, so, Pat. When's that, that one? at 5.30 on Sunday. 5.30 on Sunday. Chandani Restaurant is in Fremont. And then the day before in Evergreen, uh -huh. uh, in the Village Square, there's going to be a book sale and holiday festivities. And the book sale at least starts at 10, the festivities start shortly after, and then also that This is morning. This Patrick, Sylvia's chief of staff, he holds everything Hi. down, he does a great job. Sometimes Sylvia can't make it to the round tables, which are the first Thursday of every month at the, the library. Uh, Patrick will be there, so talk to him and, and he'll get you anything you need if you need to talk to Sylvia. But keep going, there's totally. two or three more. Yeah, What's more. up with Christmas for moms who want to take oh, yeah. Anna somewhere or so, something? So there's a... Are you 9, 9 a.m. and the... Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. You're, you're going to talk about the um, breakfast with Santa, right? Well, that's um, community right. center. Yeah. At the community center okay. at 9 a.m. on uh, December 2nd. December 2nd. At Evergreen Community Center. What else is a great morning between those two of holiday events? Nice. Evergreen. What else we got? Uh, got anything else? Go, those that was Saturday, Saturday, December. Those are the main ones. It's okay. a busy Saturday. So, we, check it. We do, have, we do have a holiday stroll happening at the uh, parking lot um, where Orchard Supply is at. And, okay. Um, uh, look, look for details. I don't, I can't think off of the top of my head what sure. the date is, but we'll and, post it. And here's one. Check out evergreenvillagesquare.com. There's um, uh, something going on. I know I always get for our Evergreen Village Square stuff. I saw something that said 840 percent more people are having an event in your or going to an event in your area. I was like, yeah, what I, is this? Awesome. And it was. Um, it was, I forget their names, but they're on a children's TV show and they're coming as well with Santa. Oh, yes, yes, you know yes, what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yeah. I know I think what you're talking about. Ash will be there. And, that, and that's the event. Oh, that's that, the that was it. That's, that's, the the whole, that's the holiday portion of the same time as the book sale. Okay. And one thing that's been helpful for me is, which is much more powerful, go put in Evergreen San Jose and then events in just Facebook in the events section, put this week or whatever. A great way to load up your calendar if whatever you're doing in your life, whatever your job is, and you want to get more active, more involved, or just take the kids out and do mm -hmm. stuff. You know, make the... Make, make the most time of it. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Thank you, Marina, thank Pat. you, Roman. Roman's um, been appreciate it. One day, I, one day, I'll have the whole panel. I'll have Ash, and Magdalena, you guys yeah. at the same time. But I uh, appreciate you guys joining. Uh, Angela, uh, thank you so much. I'll make sure uh, Patrick's gonna see this. If we missed any comments, we'll be sure to, to get yeah. back to him. But I'm Roman Nahal. This is Sylvia Arenas and Anna. And Anna. We're signing off. Cheers. Thanks so much. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays.